Good evening. Welcome to Worship in Jesus' Name on this Wednesday in the season of Lent. Just a couple of announcements. Um, oh, you need sunglasses over there. <laughs> They're all over there looking at me like this. Um, uh, then uh, kind of our synod and just some other church, church have been talking about churches and the COVID-19 um, and things to do um, to maybe help with containment so that it doesn't become a bigger thing. And so um, I was at a training a conference the last couple of days and talking with some other pastors and we shared ideas and so I came back from that today and said I just made a couple of executive decisions and told people but no with the advice from our worship committee chair and uh, a couple of things so we're uh, doing a couple of things that um, really are more preventive um, so that we don't spread germs basically which might be good practices overall the first thing I would remind you and everything that comes out from the uh, CDCs, from the health department, from the churches, is wash your hands with soap when you need to and as often as you need to, because that is some of the best prevention that we all keep our hands healthy. And then trying to remember not to touch your face, um, which we don't realize we do. But yeah, but um, as far as like church things that we were doing and maybe starting this evening, um, I know they didn't hand you a bullet. I have a bulletin and a book, <laughs> partly because I wrote stuff on it that I need to remember. Um, so that because we reuse these through the whole season, um, we didn't necessarily just automatically hand you one. If you would like a bulletin or a book, a Holden book, please know that you can have one. It's not that you can't have one, but um, but it, but since we have the ability to have the service on the screens and that, that we can still worship and have the words, um, we're encouraging that because, you know, just with all the people touching these various pieces of paper, it also would encourage that you sing the hymns from the screens, but if you want to use the hymn book, go ahead. But but the hymn books would be hard to disinfect. <laughs> so, um, so that's why we're encouraging that. Um, and then also with the offering this evening, um, instead of passing the plates, which means everybody in the congregation is touching the plates, the encouragement is just you have locations to receive the offering. And since we're doing a participatory thing with each theme, the theme each week, and I was gonna have you come forward as if you're participating in that, um, we put some offering plates at the front. So when we get to that, and I'm also moving that. So after the reflection, we'll sing the hymn and then do this. I'll explain the participation piece tonight and then we'll do that and receive the offering at the same time. So you can bring your offering up with you if you're coming up to do the thing, or there's also an offering plate at the back of the church if you have an offering and want to leave it as you go. Um, and then again, encouraging in this service, we don't really formally share the peace of Christ, but we are invited to go in peace. And I know we greet one another and the encouragement is that you not shake hands so be creative i think on sunday it said you know do the vulcan live long and prosper somebody came out of church and did the namaste move which is a you know an honoring somebody somebody said just touch your heart look at somebody touch your heart and say the peace of christ and then there was a video that our south dakota bishop she was trying to teach us at this event i was at do sign language which um i can't i don't quite have this first part but it's like the peace of christ right the peace peace be with you. <laughs> so, like I said, I can't really do it, but maybe some of you can do that. Um, but find a way to greet one another without necessarily shaking hands. So, some of the other things that are mentioned is things we already do. Um, so, there's guidance about not using a common cup for communion, or we rarely do intinction. We sometimes do, but not doing intinction where everybody's dipping their fingers in a cup, um, but serving individually, which is what our practice is. And then when we serve food, have the servers dish it up, which is something we already do. So um, we're just being trying to be aware. Um, but the overarching word is do not be afraid and do not be anxious. Um, but we will do what we can so that we keep all of us healthy. And there is guidance that says if you are over a certain age or part of a vulnerable population, that church is actually one of the worst places you can go because you have such close contact with people. Um, but if you feel you need to stay home, know that we will provide you with um, worship and spiritual care. So um, on Facebook, there are probably people watching now. You can watch any service on the Facebook feed. We will send you a copy of a bulletin and a service uh, sermon from Sunday if you would like. Um, 
we'll try to keep those connections going if you feel like you can't come. So um, like I said, don't be overly anxious, but know that we'll try to do our best to steward everybody's health by the practices we have. Um, so now that I've talked about that for five minutes and we're all anxious, um, we'll move on. <laughs> but um, I wanna thank uh, Brian Penn as our speaker this evening as we consider uh, the second gift of discipleship from the covenant of baptism, which is to hear God's word and share in the Lord's Supper. So really the gift of worship and coming together in a place where we hear God's word for our lives. And so Brian Penn is our speaker. Um, Brian Penn is our director of youth and young adult ministry for those who may not know him. Um, and he um, is also a seminary student. So he is learning how to be a pastor. <laughs> so, um, so he is going to share this evening. I think those are all the particular announcements I have. So I would invite you to stand as we um, sing our song for Lent, which is called Water Life. And it is on the screens, or if you would like the books, 457. <laughs>
our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Our psalm for the evening Our psalm for the evening is Psalm 100 
Make a joyful, joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Our second reading is from Luke 24, 28 through 32. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead of them, meaning Jesus, as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly saying, stay with us because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? Here ends the reading. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. When you come to worship, what's on your mind? Why do you come to worship? Some of us come to praise God, to say thank you. All come burdened with daily life. Even if you think that everything is great for you, you still carry the weight of others and the worry. So we come to lament, repent, praise, and listen to God's word. The entire worship service is a sermon meant to deliver the message of Jesus Christ and his forgiveness. Even the prelude is part of a worship service. This is a time to clear your mind and ready yourself for worship. The hymns are prayers set to music. In the psalm for this evening, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness and come to the, to, into his presence with singing. Worship the Lord with gladness. Each portion of the service is a way for us to reach out to God and for God to come to us. At the beginning of the baptism service, we hear, God who is rich in mercy and love gives you a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to a new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Also in baptism, the parents or participants are asked, as you come forward to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with them among God's faithful people, to bring them to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in their hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture them in faith and prayer so that they may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through the word and deed, care for others in the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help them grow in Christian faith? in life. This sounds like a list of demands, but in baptism, God puts his Holy Spirit in you and he gives you the means to which they happen. Paige spoke last week about living among God's people. I'm going to cover worship and Holy Communion. Keep in mind that when I teach the Holy Communion class, it's four weeks long and it's one hour each week, so get comfortable. Seriously, there's a reason that these promises are put forward. Baptism closes with a blessing. We give thanks, O oh God, that through the water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, raise them to eternal life, sustain them with the gift of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge, the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. 
the sign of the cross is made on the forehead, and then the pastor will say, Child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Baptism happens once. No take backs. You are claimed as a child of God forever. In the stained glass window above me, there are two sets of flames. That is a representation of worship. One set starts at the bottom and works its way upward. That is us in worship, raising our prayers, praises, and voices to God. The other starts at the top, way downward. God coming to us in the word and sacrament. However, I would point out that even though the window shows that the flames stop halfway, worship is not a half practice. Instead, it is where we raise our praise and our prayers to God and where God comes to us all the way we are to deliver his promise of forgiveness through Jesus Christ. I told you that there's a reason that those promises are put forward in baptism, and there is. We hear in Paul's letter to Galatia, Galatians 2.16, Yet we know that a person is justified not by the works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. And we have come to believe in Jesus Christ so that we might be justified by faith in Christ. This is what Luther's point was when he stood against the Roman church, justified by faith alone. But how do we get faith? And the short answer is, you don't. Faith is planted with baptism and watered weekly with the word. The word comes to you only by a preacher. Faith comes through hearing and worship is where that happens. Even Peter had lost his way and needed a preacher to be sent to him, Paul in this case, to preach to him so that he could hear anew the message that Christ had given him. The Crossroads Conference here has a service for pastors so that they can hear the word preached to them. It's needed because as humans, we forget and we need to be reminded or we miss the message because our mind was someplace else or it just falls on deaf ears sometimes. But it needs to be watered again and again. The text from Luke is a portion of the story of the road to Emmaus. The two disciples are on the road discussing and possibly crying because Jesus has been crucified. Jesus, risen from the grave, is walking ahead of them, but they don't recognize him. They ask him to join them, and he, brings, he begins to tell them the story and to preach to them the good news, and they still don't recognize him. When he joins them for a meal, he took the bread, he broke it, and now their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. When he disappeared, what they said next is important. Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road and while he was opening the scriptures to us? That was worship, opening the scriptures so that the ears can hear, the eyes can be opened, and that hearts can burn when the scriptures are opened. In Holy Communion, we hear the words in the night in which he was betrayed. Our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new Testament in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Note, the bread and the wine are not symbols for the body and the blood. They are the vessels that Jesus used to impart his last will and testament, the promise of forgiveness. This is another way that God comes to you where you are, here and now. In baptism, it is the water and the word. This is because Jesus knew and understood that the disciples and us need tangible touch, taste, and seeing type teaching. Along with singing hymns and praying, 
It makes worship an interac interactive experience. The name communion, similar to community, gives the impression that of being a meal that we have to do together. And Jesus taught us to do it. But it is the words for you that takes it from being a communal event to being a very personal one. It is now being done to you in a very personal way that only you can experience. I mean that because we all see things and hear things differently, worship will be as different for you as that we are different from each other. In the proclamation of Jesus, of Christ's death and resurrection for the forgiveness of sin, God's grace that delivers the faith in Jesus Christ needed to stand righteous before God, worship is how that message is delivered. And the message of grace is spoken here. Amen. Let's stand as we join in singing our hymn, uh, Word of God Come Down on Earth. seated for a moment. Um, our participation thing this evening that we'll do in, uh, is something that is normally done during the season of Epiphany, but I thought I'm going to use it for Lent. But it's a thing called uh, Star Words. And it's called Star Words because in, in Epiphany you have the star. The Word of God is considered the star that, we, that guides our life. And there's a practice that comes out of the Mennonite and the Reformed tradition that um, and Epiphany begins, you know, is in January, so it kind of begins the year, but that everybody within a congregation gets a star word that is meant to be a word for the year, actually. It's a word that comes um, that you live with for a year and see how that word is going to grow in your life or shape your life or be a part of your life. And so we're using them as Lenten journey words. Um, and these words, since one of the focuses that we hear God's word and, and share in his supper and, a big, and the sacraments are living words of God, um, is that you will get a word. And it's just a single word. All the words are words from the Bible. Um, but if you want to participate, you would come and I will hand you a word so we don't have everybody's hands in, in the basket. But, and you might get your word. I mean, this is another thing like last week when you, if you wanted a name to pray for, you just took a name and that was the name you were supposed to have for the week. This will be like God's, a word by the work of the Spirit. And you might look at the word and go, I don't even know what that word means. So the first thing you might want to do is go look up your word in the dictionary, even if it's a common word. But there's um, some words in there that when I was looking at the list, I thought, why is this on the list? One, for example, was cooking. 
Somebody might get the word cookie. And maybe it means that you are supposed to do more cooking, actual cooking during whatever. And I would say you could use this word for the, the next week, the Lenten season, or if you want to carry it with you through the whole rest of the year, feel free to. But you might think, well, maybe you are supposed to do some more cooking, feeding people. But also think of other meanings of the word, you know, like to cook, which is sometimes we use that word that, well, there's some action or experience or something is really cooking around here, right? Um, and so maybe you're meant to like go through life thinking about what is God cooking up in my life right now um, in a more, you know, broader sense. So, so these take your word and just live with it. And I know people, um, as I was reading about this practice, some people take their word and they put it where they'll see it for whatever time period you want to do this. So maybe on the bathroom, tape it to your bathroom mirror. So when you get up in the morning and you're brushing your teeth, you're reminded of your word. Or put it in your car where you'll, not that it will distract you, but that you'll see it on your drive to wherever you go each day. Or maybe uh, one person said they hung it on like, the door, their door that they went out every morning, you know, at eye level. So as they went out the door, they were reminded of their word. So again, I think, um, and the, the sense is, is that it's not random, but that you will get the word you are supposed to have. So we'll offer a prayer, and then if you would like to come get a word, um, you can come get a word. I'll give you a word, draw one for you. But also, it's also the time. If you have an offering that you haven't put, there's I know there's a plate at the back, but if you st have an offering you want to give, you could also leave your offering in one of the plates as you come forward. So um, let's pray, and then um, you can come get a word, and we'll do the offering. So good and gracious God, we do give you thanks for your word, your word that of scripture that speaks to us as we read your holy book, your word that is found in the sacraments as you come to us in water and bread and wine, and the word that is Jesus, um, your word incarnate, as we look to him and his grace for our lives. And we do thank you, God, that your word shapes us and forms us, and pray your blessing on these words, that you would speak to us through that which we receive, that we might consider how you are at work in our lives and what you are calling us to. So bless the these words and bless all who receive them that they might be a part of something that you are doing in them and in the world in Jesus name amen so if you would like uh, you can come forward for a word and to receive uh, to give an offering or you can take your offering also to the back <laughs>
gracious, all of creation. God Keep watch on our loved ones and keep us from danger. For all the beloved who rest in your mercy. Help us comfort us all of our days. Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God, praise and thanks to you. May God the Creator bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the Spirit Love be our guide and path for all of our days. Amen. We go in peace. <laughs>